Tana School Board, it is Monday. It's the 24th of April, 5.30. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Eric, our attendance. Tim and Deborah will not be with us tonight, and Jelaine is running slightly late. She will be here, though. Let's all start with the uh, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next up would be simply to approve the agenda as presented. We'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor with an aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item four is the mission moment. I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Elstad for a couple of introductions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, tonight it is my honor to lift up our teaching and learning department uh, for the work that they've done. I'm going to introduce them and have them stand first, and then I will uh, be glad to say just a few, th few of the things and accomplishments that they have achieved uh, this year in the last couple of years. So uh, their fearless leader is Michelle Krell, uh, Ann Michelson, Joni Harmson. Please stand and keep standing, if you would, please. Uh, Jen Kozalik, uh, Casey Clausen, Katie Demmer, Kenneth Griswold, uh, Kelly Kruger, Matt Bergwall, Mike Halverson, Tom Maher, Wendy Egermont, and I didn't see Kayla Stanton. I know she's on maternity leave. She's on maternity leave, and I don't think that uh, Laura Miller, who's your, ex your executive assistant, was able to make it tonight either. Okay, great. Um, please stay standing for just a moment. I'm incredibly proud of the work that this team has done. Just to give you a couple of things that, would, uh, that I want to call to your attention. Collaboration is at the core of what this team provides for over 5,000 learners in our school district. They are the folks that tackle big problems. Like when you learn on a day in March that we're going to be closing schools <laughs> the following week. And you totally redesign the way that we've offered education for the last one or 200 years, if you will. They tackle big problems. They provide professional development to a comprehensive pre-K-12 program. They provide curricular alignment, and as I mentioned before, which had to make a major shift during the pandemic, but we did it. Our graduation rates are coming out tomorrow, and you're going to see that we made improvements again in the Oatana School District. Those results are embargoed right now, and I can't share those with you. <laughs> But I will tell you that it's, uh, we're taking a tick upward, and this team is part of that success. They procure MCA testing for our entire district, along with all of the other testing that we do, to make sure that we are accurately providing the most individualized education program that we can. They provide instructional coaching to our talented teachers to continue to enhance classroom instruction and the student experience. And lastly, <clears throat> probably most recently, was the advent of Oatana Online, which is becoming a state-renowned program. This is a dedicated team. I'm very proud of the work that they've done. And as a school board, as a community, you should be proud as well. Thank you. Mr. Elstad, thank you very much. Item five tonight is public forum. and. Uh, this is a good reminder to uh, a good opportunity to remind everyone of the importance of meeting decorum. We do not allow slander, defamation, profanity, personal attacks, or revelations of private data. And as chair, I respectfully request that the public refrain from interrupting speakers during public forum. You'll be provided three minutes, asked to state your name and the subject you would like to address. We have one card tonight from Marie Olinger. Ms. Olinger, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Um, my name is Marie Olinger, and I'm here on behalf of Owatonnans Partnering for Education Integrity, otherwise known as OPEN. And earlier this month, we hosted an event that offered advice for engaging in civil dialogue about contentious social and political issues using a pro-human approach. The event was well attended, 
and we wanted to personally thank Mrs. Headland, Mr. Sebring, and Mr. Elstead for taking the time to attend that event. We know your time is precious and we hope you think it was time well spent. Um, we hope to host similar events in the future and we're just grateful for your ongoing work with the school and the district and your willingness to partner with parents and having that dialogue, so thank you. Ms. Olinger, thank you. Uh, tonight we have a couple of reports, and the first one would be the, uh, a report from the Owatonna Partners for Economic Development, or OPED. I'll ask Mr. Elstad, Elstad to make some uh, introductions for us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the board, tonight we have Brad Meyer, who is the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Owatonna, and Roger uh, Wareheim, who is the general manager at the Owatonna Public Utilities. Um, I am uh, proud to serve um, as a member of the Owatonna Partnership for Economic Development. Um, I get to work with these two fine gentlemen as well as a, a, a core of people in the community that are really trying to make Oatana a better place to live and to work and certainly to go to school. And so uh, with that, uh, par as part of their annual report, I've asked Mr. Meyer and Mr. Wareheim tonight to uh, present kind of our 2022 annual report to you as a board and then stand for any questions you might have. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Elstead. And, uh, as you said, I'm Brad Meyer with the Chamber of Commerce. Great to see you all, and thank you for your service to the community and serving on the school board. We appreciate it. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a lot of exciting years here in Owatonna from an economic development standpoint, and the Owatonna Public Schools is a big part of that. And we're happy to have Superintendent Elstead as part of the, kind of part of the team with the Owatonna Partners for Economic Development. So thanks again, and we're excited about uh, that small high school project you've got <laughs> opening here in the fall as well. Um, what I'm going to I'm going to share just a little bit about kind of the year that was, and that's you have that uh, report in front of you, and then uh, Roger's going to give you a little bit of a picture to kind of where we're going with our str strategic plan and strategy moving forward. So, uh, and then we'll we'll take any questions you have. 2022 feels like a long time ago, but you've got a report here uh, in front of you, and it was another. Really a uh, very exciting year for Owatonna, I think, as far as the growth and continued evolution uh, of the community. Uh, you can see there with uh, housing, even though it, it continues to be a huge challenge where we know we need more and more housing, uh, <coughs> 260 units were added. Uh, apartment living continues to grow here and we know single family uh, continues to be a need and, and will continue to be worked on. Workforce development is another piece of the puzzle. So our businesses continue to tell us that they need more talent, more resources to grow. If they're going to grow here, they need that. Uh, and that's uh, probably no surprise to you. Our partnerships with the school district here in Owatonna have been terrific through the Steel Co Works program and with the Career Pathways program that's here at the Owatonna High School. We're also working with the other schools in the county to give students an opportunity to see what is available here uh, within the walls of Steele County. That could be careers and jobs for them. The other piece of that that I'll just mention real quick is that uh, Superintendent Elstead's been real active with the Owatonna Learn to Earn initiative. And if that passes through the legislature, we'll have some dollars to continue to push uh, mechatronics education, which is what our industries need. Uh, both in the high school and at Riverland Community College. And we're very excited about the prospects of that as well. Um, the rest of the items you can see here, obviously we continue to grow industrial, commercial uh, in the community. You'll see that as well in 2023. Uh, there's some of the projects noted here on the, in the purple. And then capital investment totaled 160.6 million, and that includes county development as well uh, in 2022. So with that, I'll turn it over to Roger. All right, thank you. Um, I've been involved with Owatonna Partners for Economic Development for a number of years. And you know, what's been interesting to me, I've seen us kind of move from a proactive approach to, I'm sorry, from a reactive approach to a proactive mm -hmm. approach. Um, we still have a lot of reactivity. There'll be a developer that comes, um, has got an idea, wants to, to build and the, the beauty of our organizations partnering together is that we can respond very quickly and bring all the things we need that that developer or that potential investment might need. Um, but proactively, we've been working with a strategic plan now for a number of years, and we kind of keep getting that more and more focused. Um, our, our focus areas are three. One is attract, 
and educate a quality workforce. That has been on the radar for a number of years now. And I have to say, I, I feel like, honestly, mm -hmm. once Jeff has gotten on board, it's been a huge boost to us and we're starting to, you know, it felt like we were spinning our wheels for a number of years on that. And now it just feels like we're starting to really make some progress, getting Riverland engaged, getting, you know, the legislature with the Learn to Earn um, and even some other initiatives that, that we're working on there. Um, the second focus area is marketing and communications. Um, and one of our main communications avenues is to communicate with our respective boards. So that's why we're here, is make sure that you understand the value that each of our participation into this organization brings to Owatonna and that you'll continue to support, um, in this case, uh, Superintendent Elstad, um, because we really value his input and his participation in this organization. Um, and then the third one is our new development and redevelopment efforts. And, and uh, within that, those three focus areas, uh, we have some outcomes in 2023, um, namely under marketing and communications, uh, we have a full community input brand and message created as an outcome. You've probably heard some of that. The Chamber's been working on that. We've been out in the, in the public uh, getting engagement, getting ideas and so on. So that, that's moving along well. We have 100 million in new investment countywide. So it's like another <laughs> banner year like we had last year. And we think we on target that we can meet that and 300 new housing units, which is a little more than we had last year. Um, under Attract and Educate Workforce, we have um, a, an outcome of a structure and finances for a comprehensive K-12 education system in Owatonna. And you probably have, I'm guessing I'm not uh, giving you something new here, but that's, that's huge. And then we're, um, and actually this fell to Jeff as well, uh, was to be involved and influential in the hiring process of Riverland leadership because that's a key component for us when it comes to educating a workforce and making sure that Owatonna is getting the attention that it deserves. We feel like that hasn't been happening for the last number of years and it feels like we're making progress there. So with that, I'll stop and we'll just open it up to questions. Uh, questions? So Steel County Works Workforce Development, is there any statistical information that because of this program there are X amount of students that either have stayed in the community because of exposure within their educational career or they were directly hired because of the program? I, I think it's a great program and I really appreciate right. it and the hard work that goes into it, but is there a we had 5% more students that went directly to work in our community than the previous year, or whatever that is. Yeah, so <clears throat> probably not the exact okay. statistics yeah. you're asking yeah. about, but um, so direct connection with students um, was 85 students were work, worked with, and we worked with 85 businesses last year. That's direct kind of one-on-one -on -one through the Steel Co. Works program. That doesn't include any of the work Brian Coleman's doing or Made No Atana Days, which is a program that mm -hmm. um, touches about 150 students that get out and get to see these opportunities. Um, part of our strategic plan for that program is to figure out how to then track these students mm -hmm. five years out and where did they end up? Are they still here? Are they employed in the career path that they wanted to, that type of thing? And um, we'd love to be able to have that to share with you too. You're probably what, year four? Remind me how many years have Oh, yeah, we're year five. Year, year five, five okay. of the program. So yep. Just be yep. able to take, get some of that information this year. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I would add one thing if I could interject. You know, um, last year, one of our sort of markers with that would be our signing day. And uh, I think there were roughly 25 students that signed with, you think of that as a college signing, they're actually signing with businesses mm -hmm. and yeah. making a commitment. That's right. Um, so we had roughly about 25 students that attended. And that number was up by 100% from the year prior. And so we anticipate it will continue to build momentum where students are getting opportunities um, that maybe haven't been or are not interested in a four-year sort of college track, but are entering the workforce with some training along the way. That's right. This year's signing day will be May 31st, too. FYI, we'll get you guys invited. but. Um, the other piece of this too is just um, just being able to understand what is available here is a huge step beyond where we were um, 
and provides that opportunity to students that um, primarily are not planning to go to like a four-year school, military, that kind of thing. And so that's where that guidance is so helpful to them. Mm -hmm. So I, um, my question is focused on tax base. Um, and as you know, right, all of our constituents, all of our families and households, um, you know, bear the tax burden to support our school district. So it's encouraging and exciting to hear you folks, you know, bringing in more businesses, bringing, expanding, you know, our tax base in the city of Owatonna. And maybe this is unfair again, I don't know how much you can comment on, but um, could you comment on the extent to which that tax base is expanding and how that might, you know, benefit, frankly, the schools um, and certainly our taxpayers in terms of what right. they're being asked to pay? Well, um, so the tax base grows in a variety of ways, mm -hmm. of course. So values go up, too, and that increases your tax base. And, in fact, that's a, you know, that can be a very big, significant mm -hmm. portion than it was this last year. Um, what we are what we are anticipating or we know will happen is we've got tax increments financing projects that will be through their nine years mm -hmm. in the industrial park starting I believe this year okay. with a couple of big projects and so all those mm -hmm. tax dollars go um, fully onto the tax rolls right we never lost anything but we take the increment yeah. um, and as we continue to add, then those those projects continue to grow the pie, so to speak, right. for the tax base. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to recall right off the top of my head. I think new growth last year was, you know, maybe uh, 30 to 40 percent of the growth in tax base. The mm -hmm. rest of it was your house, my house, right. all the you know all the yep. values that went yep. up. So, yep. Yep. Thank you. Yep. yep. Appreciate that. Jason, anything? Haley. I did want to add one thing about tax base. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Um, I think when you have a relationship with the um, businesses and partnerships with business, it starts to turn more from what are my taxes into an investment, mm -hmm. particularly when the return on the investment is more employees that are walking into their businesses that are able to work. And I think I've seen that shift happen mm -hmm. through Steel Co. Works our career pathways program where we're starting to build momentum, understanding that it's a symbiotic relationship there. Mm -hmm. um, we have the greatest human resource that this community holds, our school system. And uh, if we're able to better train our students where they're interested in the workforce right away and or if they do end up doing some school, whatever that post-secondary experience looks like, they're coming back to our community and contributing in the businesses that need them here. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the word investment because yeah. I know taxes, I, I pay taxes too, but it's also an investment, yeah. I think, back into a system that will continue to grow um, our businesses. Brett, could you answer one more question? And it has to do with the very first item that you talked about, that being housing. Yeah. Um, it, you know, this, from this observer's perspective, housing seems to go like a pendulum that only goes fast, and that is we can't build houses fast enough or nobody's buying new houses yeah. Yeah. and um, and we talk about incentives or ways to create more housing growth but can you talk about that that seems like a really difficult thing to do yeah um, well I'm not I'm not a housing expert by any means so I can just give you my perspective on it and uh, you can jump in too, Roger. <laughs> well, the the challenge is is not in Owatonna alone, as you know. It's um, really throughout the country where we've got these challenges. In in our community, we went through about a ten year dry spell with, during the recession, where we weren't building anything for the most part, and so um, then to play catch up mode is is difficult, and prices have gone up and those kind of things. And the cycle that you get into is that the value of a new house is so much higher. And so it, when people talk about affordable housing or starter houses, those are the existing stock houses. But to move into those, uh, uh, the people who are in them now then have to pay more to get into a new home. It's just kind of that cycle. And so um, what we're seeing in a lot of communities is it's more cost effective for people to, uh, to rent, and they're doing that. Um, that's not necessarily a, 
a total long-term strategy though because you definitely want people to own and live and be uh, have their roots in your community as well and so there's a balance there um, one of the big costs to to new housing developments is is create like breaking the land open and putting in the infrastructure and all those things and um, we're fairly confident that we'll see some of that this year uh, in Owatonna and that is that's a big step forward and we need all different types um, we, we know we hear uh, the lower end is a huge need but we actually do need all levels and we're hearing that from business as well that we need kind of the medium and the, the high end as well we need more of, of all of the above so um, continue to push that rock up the hill I don't know what else to say about it. I don't know that I have much more <laughs> to, to add to that and it may not seem like much of an answer other than yes it's a really hard nut to, to crack mm -hmm. and we're doing a lot of things and um, you know finding developers what we can do but it it does really come down to cost these days and it hasn't gotten better in the last three years by any means so yeah okay Brad Meyer Roger Wareheim thank you very much thank you, thank you. Uh, up next, uh, we have a report from Wilson Elementary, and I'm going to ask Mr. Uh, Elstad for some introductions, but before I do, uh, Mr. Zerbergen has been very accommodating with us. We asked him to switch his presentation date at least once, and it might have been twice. So we appreciate your, uh, your willingness to be flexible with us. We appreciate it. Mr. Elstad, if you would, please. Yes, it is my uh, privilege tonight to present uh, Mr. Zerbriggen, who for the first time publicly at a meeting, I can refer to as Principal Matt mm -hmm. Zerbriggen at yeah. Wilson Elementary. Yeah. And uh, he is accompanied by some staff tonight uh, to talk about uh, some of the work that they're doing at Wilson Elementary. So, Mr. Zerbriggen. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, I have with me Alicia Field, our school social worker, and Casey Clausen, our instructional coach, two people that I can say in my first year at Wilson Elementary have been instrumental in the work we're doing around literacy and trauma responsiveness. And so I was thinking about that being in my first year here, and there's a longevity to this for me, entering into my first year and what it's gonna look like for many years down the road at Wilson. And I kind of landed on culture and climate. And I landed on that, and it really came out of my spring and summer meetings with the staff who I have now, and a chance to ask them four questions. What's great about Wilson? What can we continue to do better? What are your values? And what are your expectations for me as a leader? And so I landed on the culture and climate. And when I think about climate, it's really how do we feel? How do we feel when we come to work? How do our kids feel? How do our families feel? How does the community feel when they step into Wilson? And when I think about culture, it's how do we behave? How do we display our actions that really impact the educational experience for our kids? And so those are two areas of focus um, that we're going to walk through tonight for you. So what I'd like to do first is I'm going to read this for you. And I'd like you to think about how does it make me feel and what are my behaviors or actions that might go with this. And it's from an excerpt called Written Off. I'm going to read it for you right now. That student is going to end up in big trouble. So don't try to tell me he can turn things around because the more I think about it, he's throwing his life away. And I'm not going to say he's a good kid. Let me tell you, there's no hope for him. And I refuse to believe there's some good in that student because whenever he crosses my mind, I think it's only a matter of time. I'm going to read it again, and this time I'm going to read it from the bottom up. And I want you to think about the feelings and the behaviors that it can create in you. It's only a matter of time because whenever he crosses my mind, I think there's some good in that student. And I refuse to believe there's no hope for him. Let me tell you, he's a good kid. And I'm not going to say he's throwing his life away. Because the more I think about it, he can turn things around. So don't try to tell me that student is going to end up in big trouble. This has become a staple for us. It's something that I've given to every staff member we have. We, we target it at our staff meetings to kick us off. Because I think as we approach each day in the daily grind, we need to be reminded of how are we going to read this. Are we going to read it from the top down or the bottom up? And it will really impact how we feel and how we service our students. So when you look at that, we have 433 gifted and talented kids that come into our building every day. 73% of them are eligible for free and reduced lunch. We're a Title I school. 
When I look at the next two numbers, 71 students receiving special services and 103 students receiving English language services, I focused on these two areas and I've acknowledged with our staff that we don't call those students special ed students and we don't call them English language students. They're general education students that just happen to receive special services. And that matters and that influences the way we approach them. And you look at the home languages in our building of English, Spanish, Somali, Laotian, Cantonese, Chinese, Vietnamese, Albanian, and Noor. We're a very unique and diverse building and it's what makes Wilson great. And again, it creates a climate and a culture that's really positive. And so we know we have to be able to touch the heart before we teach the mind. And I'm going to hand it over to Alicia to talk a little bit more about that. So we have been on a trauma responsive journey at Wilson for about five years. Um, and Matt has brought a really great perspective and helped us clean up some of our processes. Um, we've just recently hired a third BI to meet the needs of our students, um, really so that we can be responsive to their needs in the moment. We are finding that that's where we see the growth in students social emotionally, when we can meet them in that moment when they're struggling with that strong feeling and then provide them with the community supports that may be necessary. Alicia, can you remind us of BI? Sorry, behavior, behavior interventionists. Thank you. The world of education and acronyms. <laughs> Yes, um, and so we really are trying to get better at that tier two support. Um, our teachers are wonderful at teaching our skills and um, really just have grasped onto our system, trying to find where, how do we meet those kids who are in the middle, not quite receiving special education services, um, the support maybe that they need before they get to that level of need. And then just continuing to work on that tier one support across our building, supporting our teachers that are in the trenches. So one of the ways, again, that we focus on that climate and culture component is we really work to honor each other. Um, our staff went through this January during MLK Day, our honors retreat with Youth Frontiers, and it was a chance to just really step in and lean into each other as we all get to know each other. And what do we honor about one another? And one of the ways that we can do that is 58 different staff members have written just uh, staff recognition, um, paragraphs of gratitude towards one another that I get to hand deliver and you can see from uh, the screen and what you might have in front of you that there's huge smiles that come with that. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's about honoring kids but it's also about honoring one another. And we do honor our students. We find fun ways to honor them and to provide experiences for them but these are just a few of our kids that have been recognized for the wonderful things they do. And as Alicia mentioned, we have skills we focus on. Um, respect looks different for different cultures and for different individuals. So we talk about accepting directions and area of designation and negative interactions or positive interactions. We use very specific skill language and when our kids are exemplifying that, we work to honor them and you can see the smiles here of the kids that have received a uh, positive referral for those skills and the demonstrations that they put forth every day. And I think more importantly, they get probably more excited that they get the A's for Applebee's free kids meal <laughs> card. That comes with that. Um, but as you can see of our student population, when I put this together, 355 of our kids have been recognized at least once. So that means that our staff are really paying attention to that. And again, they can recognize kids that are meeting those skills because they're teaching those skills. And they're really digging into that. I mentioned to you we are a title school. So just to maybe provide a little background of some of the experiences that come with being a title school, I'll turn it over to Casey. All right, so not only are we working on the social emotional end, we're also working on that academic end. And the goals of a title school are to increase student achievement, direct instruction that meets each individual need, um, provide PD, quality PD to teachers, and parent education and involvement. So we work on the professional development of the, our staff working on getting our kids what we need, and then of course educating the parent as a whole. So uh, you can see we had a couple um, title nights this year. One of them was the National Eagle Center that came. We had parents come in and we learned all about eagles, which was absolutely yeah. <laughs> so fun. Um, I think Mr. Z was probably really excited about it and he got to experience his first title night where the families bring in all of their children it's not just our Wilson kids. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it was everybody. Yeah. And there was a lot of stuff going on. Yep. Um, Eyes wide open. <laughs> and during that night, we're able to educate um, what are we doing at Wilson? What does that look like? And then we're also to ask, we ask parents for feedback. What can we do differently? How can we better support you? 
um, and your student. Um, and then we also just recently did Camping Under the Stars. And here's some pictures of our wonderful event. Um, Mr. Z is a very like big picture guy. And so when he said we were gonna turn our um, school into a camping night, I think Alicia and I were like, oh, no. okay. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, but you can see we got a life-size bear. Um, we got all kinds of things. He pulled off, you know, and, and we worked together to, with our interventionist to pull off an amazing night for families. When they came in, they were um, able to go visit with a real life author and then ha who happened to be Mr. Z's um, cousin. And she was able to walk them through the writing process. They were able to get a, like a little journal and a pencil at that station. And then they got a flashlight, which then they could take to the tents to read. And it's really funny, um, us three do not camp but we were the ones to set up the tents. So a lot of educating <laughs> happened that day. I will admit we tried to use the canopy as the actual tent and we realized that we were, yeah, it was funny. We were, we were very sweaty, and, but we got the tents up. The kids and families absolutely loved it. They got a new book on the way in to read and enjoy with their families. We also provided a meal and then we also had some um, arts and crafts for them to do and bingo was a big hit. There was a waiting line for bingo, and the kids were so excited to just go in and play bingo with their families. We had about 225 people at both events. I'm not a camper. I'll just say that again. So I think as you can see, um, like I said, there's a longevity of this for me as a building leader, and we know we continue to have work to do around academics. But we also have work to do around creating memories. And when I you know, even hear the previous presentation around the economic development and families staying in this community, part of that is what we provide outside of the academic experience. And so my grandma always said, work hard, play hard. And that's something that we try to live and breathe every day at Wilson. And I think we're off to a good start. So thank you. Questions? <laughs> Mm. Okay, I have a comment and a question. So comment first is I interact with a variety of people and a variety of different walks of life throughout you know, what I do in the community. And I hands down, when families tell me that they have kids at Wilson, they say, so how's the year going? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. My kids loving it. We're having a really good year, hands down. So thank you for the work that you guys are doing. Thank you. Um, and my question is, Mr. Z, what's that one thing that you think have learned this year that you're like, ooh, if they would have told me that in my how to be a principal of an elementary school <laughs> handbook. <laughs> what, what's the one thing that kind of filters to the top? Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I would say I've learned it this year. I would say I had an awareness of it going into this. And personally, I've learned that my work-life balance matters and I have been way more um, I would say energized on a daily basis just with that work-life balance Good. making some commitments there Good. Awesome. Yeah. and I try to I try to promote that with staff too that you're you're no good for the kids if you're not good for your family yeah. awesome. Good. Thank yeah. you. Um, maybe really just a comment mm -hmm. and maybe a future I need more of an education about Title I exactly, you know, and, and how it differs from other buildings. And I, I appreciate your examples and I Wanna have a, a sense quick of overview? it. But I don't know if anybody can give me like. I defer to you. This is my first year. <laughs> <laughs> and I should, I should probably know that. One year I get one year of grace, right? I feel like I should know more about that. But um, no, Again, so it's one of those labels that we hear a lot about, but yeah. I don't have the... Okay, so we have to qualify to be a title school, and that is dependent on lots of different areas. A lot of it is based on, but not only, socioeconomic status of students, so for our free and reduced numbers. Okay. And then what we have to do then is we create a plan on how are we going to best meet the supports of our diverse needs. So it's like you would take, for example, like a Lincoln doesn't have as a high diverse population. Yep. So they are not a title funded school. Okay. So title dollars bring in extra supports that we yes. can provide. And Wilson's the only one in our district that has. No, no, mm -hmm. McKinley and I believe Washington has, it. no, just McKinley? Just McKinley and Wilson. Okay, huh. McKinley and Wilson. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. I, again, I should probably know this stuff, but no. Yep. There's a lot of it's education. Ha- I've got about a 30 minute. Um, I'm right. You know That's what it's a thrilling Actually, PowerPoint he has. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, the title on programming was um, a product of the Lyndon B. Johnson administration hmm. um, with the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. And uh, when that was put in place, it was put in place to benefit um, students that uh, were living in poverty. And uh, so it's, it has gone, it has been a program that's been around for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, there are some financial benefits that come because um, time has told us, and as well as experience has told us that um, more supports at times are needed. Um, sometimes there are families that just have working situations that um, don't allow for the extra support that's mm-hmm. needed. And so that's um, one instance yeah. um, of why Title I funding was put in place. Yeah. Thank you. And, and it, I will say it does provide us, and it is something I've <laughs> learned and really enjoyed um, digging into, is it, it provides the staff component as well as mm-hmm. different intervention supports, but also with our structure at Wilson, we have a power halftime, which every day we run grade level interventions where we can really spread out kids and drill down to their specific literacy mm-hmm. needs mm-hmm. and get them more local instruction at a smaller grouping. Mm-hmm. And you have the staff to pull that off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Elstead, some closing comments? Yes. Um, thank you the, for the three of you. I see we have a couple of other Wilson staff sitting in the audience tonight. Um, what a great team at Wilson. I was just there this morning. I get over there every so often. Um, just a really welcoming place to be. Um, as I was walking through the back door, I happened to be walking through a physical education class that was in the gym. And, um, <laughs> When I'm walking through the gym, I'm always uh, part of their FIED um, oh, yeah. activity. <laughs> and sometimes I stay a little longer than I should mm-hmm. uh, in the gymnasium. But um, I appreciate the focus you've taken on relationships because we have learned, and we've, this has been known for a couple hundred years, without significant relationships, learning can't happen mm-hmm. because there's no trust. And so I appreciate your focus on relationships because we will be much farther ahead as a world if we put relationships first. Mm. So thank you for your attention to that. Thank you, appreciate it. Wilson, thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, item seven tonight is just general information. Uh, Do any of you have any questions for Mr. Elstad with regard to the enrollment report? Hearing none, we're gonna move on. Um, Item eight tonight. No action required. First would be board form. Jace, do you mind if I start with you down on your end of the table? Yes. You do mind? Sorry. Okay. Jolene. I've got nothing. <laughs> Jace, I appreciate you saying no, don't start with me. <laughs> like, I really appreciate you saying that. Yourself. Yes. All right. That was my board forum. So, good work, Jace. It's my turn? Yeah. Um, you'll see it a little later on the agenda, but um, the policy committee, once again, has been hard at work. Um, and there's a number of policies for first review tonight. Um, I think the only one I would call out, um, again, it's not, none of them have major um, changes and they're fairly well identified, but the first one did, um, we did take some time to um, expand that definition of obscene, really unfortunately to acknowledge um, notions of violence and violent promoting um, behavior would also be considered obscene within that policy. So, um, like I said, unfortunate, but we thought it appropriate, so um, that's all I have. Good. I have nothing for board form, Eric. Nothing. Elizabeth? Mm-hmm. Really? Um, this week is Mental Health Week at the high school, so it's a good time for us all to like reflect on how we can better support mm-hmm. mental health in the school. And um, this week on Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday in this room at 5:30, we're doing a um, a screening of a documentary about um, suicide prevention, and it's a community event and it's free. So I would encourage everyone to mm-hmm. come. It's going to be a really impactful discussion. There's a panel afterwards as well. It's from 5.30 to 7.30. So I would encourage everyone to come. Um, <clears throat> so throughout, I had to like reflect on what I was going to present because I think this is a valuable time to present certain ideas. But the Otana speech team qualified for, at least had 12 qualifiers for state. And so that's, nice. st- I think, I believe that's a state record. That's awesome. Um, for individuals who are qualifying for state, not to be contend in state, but just in a sections tournament. Um, so I'm also excited for this uh, Friday, um, the 28th, there's going to be a state tournament 
And so I think that's going to be exciting. I'm also going to be with Moral Support, and Haley will be competing in OO. So I ho hopefully she does amazing, and I, I always have optimism for that. And then second, I'm, I'm excited um, for a lot of things that are happening in Magnet. Um, so And Magnet, we're also uh, reviewing the topic of the high school and what the high school means to the student body and something I think that's important. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, we've gone through board forum and I will lift up item one, which would be policy revisions. You did hear Lori speak to that um, briefly here. Uh, it appeared to me that there was one policy where there were some things, but most of them were kind of a first reading, maybe some minor editorial changes that were made. Um, care to lift anything else up with regard to? I don't. I don't think so. Just as, again, we um, it may not look that long. We we really do spend a fair amount of time discussing, even though at the end of the day, sometimes we arrive at no changes and so forth. But nonetheless, and thank you to Sarah for all of her uh, coordination of that. Couldn't do it without her. Any board members with questions? What was part of that? Okay, hearing none. We will move on. Thank you. Uh, item B would be the administrative report. Uh, Mr. Elstad, I'm going to turn things over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. So the legislature is hard at work. Um, you have some documents that were shared with you tonight. One of them is a side-by-side -side, uh, provision, uh, major provisions within the omnibus bills that have been presented in both the House and the Senate. You also have an accompanying uh, Governor Wall's budget that was set for education, his targets. Uh, there are a number of areas that are um, called out here, such as increases to the general ed formula, EL funding, compensatory funding. Um, I could probably name all of them there, uh, but you have a side-by-side. -side. One thing I would note about this document is that in some cases, um, it indicates the uh, number of dollars that are being set aside within the House, Senate, and Governor, their respective targets uh, for those items. This is a two-page document, so don't forget to turn uh, to the back side uh, there to see more. Um, so the status right now is the House passed the omnibus bill on a, a narrow margin last uh, week. Um, today, and I just checked right before our board meeting, the Senate is taking this their omnibus, education omnibus bill up. Um, they were in recess as of 4.57 this afternoon, so my guess is, is that they'll come back into session and continue their work on that item tonight. Uh, the next steps in the legislature, so um, if the uh, Senate um, successfully passes the omnibus bill, the next step is that each the Senate and the House will be select conferees, <coughs> and there will be a conference committee that will present a final omnibus bill uh, to be presented, I would assume, sometime the week of May 15th uh, for both the House and the Senate. Um, Governor Walls has indicated that... Um, when that omnibus bill comes to his desk, he will sign it. I've also shared a couple of other documents with you that are of particular interest. These are both letters that were shared with um, uh, Representative Cheryl Joachim, who is the uh, head of the Education Finance Committee in the House. And the other one is Senator Mary Kunish, who is the head of the Senate Finance Committee. And as you can see, uh, this <coughs> document that you have there um, uh, was shared. There's a number of bulleted items that I would call to your attention about things that are supported, yet things that we still respectfully oppose uh, within those bills. And that was signed by, um, as you can see on there, the Minnesota School Boards Association. So I lift them up into your attention. Uh, this is, it is not too late to advocate. Um, I have been in contact almost daily with Representative Petersburg and Senator Jasinski regarding this. Um, and we have found so much agreement on a number of the items that have been presented um, within that. So uh, they will continue to hear us. I also reach out to leadership with both Chair Joachim as well as Chair Kunish uh, to make sure that um, Oatana is being represented um, to make sure that we're taking care of not only our students but also our taxpayers in Oatana. And so uh, that kind of concludes my legislative report uh, with one other little uh, piece. Um, uh, Brad Meyer tonight spoke of the Learn to Earn. Um, if you remember, we um, wrote um, a grant, a $1 million grant, 
uh, that's part of our learn to earn proposal. The majority of that would be used to buy equipment to outfit a mechatronics lab at Owatonna High School. That would be more of a starter lab that then would help move them into the more um, detailed and difficult machinery that would be acquired at the Riverland campus. You may have recently read that they received a federal grant. These two grants coming together will help Owatonna and push us forward. We'll be one of the only communities in the state that has that system that really runs from grade nine through uh, their post-secondary experience. Um, the good news is, is that Senator Jasinski texted me last week late. Um, it must work late, it was like 10.30 on Friday night, so it must have been a pretty late session that night uh, that it did indeed pass in the Senate. Uh, Representative Petersburg indicated to me uh, that it was making its way through the House and he was feeling more and more confident as the day goes on, um, or as the time goes on here, excuse me. So uh, that is something that will definitely be um, a big boom uh, to our district and certainly our community as we continue to prepare um, our future employees. Uh, a couple of congratulations are in order. Um, proud of our students, and Jay slips it up that we have 12 speech students that are headed to the state meet this Friday. Uh, by the way, that's the most qualifying in, a, in this section. Uh, so I'm proud of our Owatonna High School students. I'm also proud of our Knowledge Bowl team uh, that were 2023 state champions. Uh, that says a lot about our community and the, and the uh, fine uh, students that we have in regard to their academic prowess. Um, and then lastly, um, this uh, Friday uh, will be the 90th celebration of the Big Nine Music Festival. Um, it's the longest running high school music festival in the country. And um, so all our orchestra, band, and choir will be present, or will be there performing. And um, it's one of the highlights of my year to go watch our students perform. Um, of course, I'm biased, but I think the Owatonna High School student performing groups are the best there are. <laughs> so with that, uh, that concludes my report tonight. I would stand for any questions that the board might have. Any questions? I, I just got a couple quick ones. Jeff, would it be fair, to, so these are all contained in the omnibus bill. Is that is correct. Are any of them standalone yep. bills? It's correct, yes. Yeah. So this is all in the omnibus bill. None of these are standalone. Okay. And um, they're all, so there are a number of pieces within yes. both the House and Senate file, and that's included yeah. here. But if it's all going to conference, then um, you would still have any of Well, um, there still can be changes. What you see in the House uh, part was passed um, by a margin uh, last week. Mm -hmm. The Senate is still hearing this, so that the Senate part is still sort of undecided. Um, the governor set his target quite a while ago. Yeah. Um, so that was the marker, and then the House and Senate, they all agreed to the same budget target, which I think was 2.2 billion. Um, but again, it's being divided up in different ways, and this just helps call out in a more detailed yep. way what those ways are. Um, as a follow-up, so is there um, opportunity for board members to lobby our Mm -hmm. Senators and or other legislators, and, and are these good letters to use, or even other constituents that might be interested? Uh, these are good letters, um, even if you were to, and I would be happy to share some of the pieces in here that really have of particular interest in Owatonna, mm -hmm. but again, all of them have an impact. Sure. Um, but it's not too late. In okay. fact, these are the times, especially after they name the conferees, um, is the right time to reach out to the conferees right. then, because the other folks are going to take their votes on the respective floors, um, but this is where they're going to sit down in a committee and start scratching stuff off or adding stuff and, and really making it a go. So, so maybe I can work with you and maybe yes. we can develop something. Be more than happy to do that. To folks. Yep. Um, oh, who's the coach for the speech? Is that Marcia? Yep. Yeah. Marcia Anderson. Marcia Anderson. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, when Brad was speaking, he mentioned the new Riverland president, mm -hmm. and you served on that selection committee. Yeah. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the new president? President Kat. Um, she is coming to us from Western Technical College, which is located in La Crosse. Um, I was honored to serve on that committee, and I had a very uh, specific interest in their relationships that they had with the K-12 environment. Um, we have a good thing started going here. Uh, in, going and, and now even starting even more in Owatonna where it really becomes almost like a K-14 system because um, if learners want to stay here we can provide them the post-secondary training that they would need. Um, she embraces that. Um, she gave many experiences that she had worked with the La Crosse Public Schools 
on how they're doing some very similar things there as well as some of the adjoining smaller communities around the lacrosse area. Um, I'm very pleased uh, with the decision that the chancellor made to name uh, the new president and I look forward to working with her uh, very closely. Um, again, people are watching how this goes because they recognize Oatana has a very advanced career pathways program and we're building something here that's unique. And uh, she looks forward to that as well. Sure. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to move on to item one under B, which is the radon testing results. The quick reminder here, this is an annual um, report that's provided by Bob Olson. And I'll turn things back over to Mr. Elstead for some introductions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bob is here tonight. As you mentioned, this is something we do annually to measure the radon testing within our buildings. And as part of the requirement, uh, sharing just a briefing with the board, um, about any areas that uh, were discovered that need our attention, but also what plan we had to remediate those. So Bob. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Not quite as exciting as what Mr. Zerbriggen and those guys <laughs> came up with, because that brought back a lot of memories. It was awesome listening to it. Um, every year, or about every other year, we do um, radon testing to make sure that our, our air, um, we have um, indoor air quality tests. We also do lead in the water testing, and radon is another one of the tests that we do um, based up at the state of Minnesota. We put out 622 separate tests this year on, from December 5th to December 8th, hoping to get all of them under four pico curies per liter. And I know, Jolene, you know exactly what those are. So out of all, <laughs> what is a pico curie? I know you're gonna ask that. So a pico curie per liter corresponds to 37 one thousandths radioactive disintegrations per second in every liter of air. So what we want to be is under four. That's what the, that's what the state guidelines are. Um, four is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day if it's over four. Oh. I don't know, just, just learn that. Thank, thank Google for all this stuff. Um, there were 20 rooms out of the 622 that came in over four, and none of them were like way over four. It was just like 4.0 something. So because of that, we had to go back and do, those were short-term tests. Because of those 20 that came back, we had to do um, continuous monitoring. Um, and we did that through January 16th through the, through the 27th. All of them came back after the continuous monitoring, not just a short burst to see if, how things were, and they all came back under four. So in essence, we're in great shape and feeling pretty good in Oatana about our radon test. So um, good news for us. That's it. Questions? Is that the annual? Oh. Well, there, if it's if it's under four, they recommend every five years you do tests unless you've changed your foundation. And then if you do change foundations, then they expect you to, to, to get that tested. And then if it's under if it's let me refer if it's over four, then it's about every other year, just to make sure things are going. Or unless you've uh, changed the foundation as well. Did you say this was at the new high school? No, no. all of the buildings throughout Current our district right school. now. Yeah. Oh, Nothing oh, at the new building yet. We're not in, so we haven't tested that one yet. All, all buildings. All buildings. All buildings. So okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So sampling at all of our sampling and everything. Okay. Six hundred twenty-two tests throughout all buildings. Okay. And and when it came back, there was only six of the buildings had the, excuse me, the twenty rooms were in six of our buildings. So, okay. yeah, not bad. All right. So on, one other thing, even though it's not with radon, I just want to give you a, a quick heads up. I know there's been some discussion on. Um, when we close this building about what are we doing with the stuff that's in it. I, we have been um, in, in connection with an auction unit. So what we will be doing, just in case you guys are getting questions, and I think uh, some of that may have come up in the past day or two, we have already put into motion that we will be doing some test or not testing, but we will be, the things that we're not taking with us will be up for auction in this building. Um, not necessarily the pieces of paper and things like that, but if there's tables that are staying a beautiful podium like this that's staying, we will be putting those up for auction. We will make sure we follow every, all the guidelines that we have to by law. And uh, we are recommending that our teachers not and, and staff not be throwing away pieces of furniture, just the things that might be um, in, a, in a file cabinet or files and things like that that are of no use. So we're really going to make sure that the public has a, a great opportunity to get out there and get what they need. If they really want it, we'll put it up for auction. Um, I've already been in contact with an auction company and we'll be going forward that way. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that in case you do start getting questions on it. We're anticipating that, Bob, in about September, perhaps. Somewhere in there. We are still yeah. working with, uh, we're still working with, um, it's, a, it's 
pretty difficult with everything that's going on right now with the new high school, with the current high school, um, depending on what you guys decide tonight on what we're doing. And then it probably will be sometime in September, would be my gut, because we're hoping to look moving into this place with the district office, if that goes forward mm -hmm. um, next year, we're gonna need to start doing some construction and um, taking some more things down, so yeah. Online auction or live auction? Online auction, oh. yes. Okay. We'll be hiring somebody to do that. I don't need more on my plate, no, yes. So, makes sense? Yeah. Just wanna give you a heads up in case you start getting some questions on that, so thank you. Any questions? All right, thanks. Thank All right, you. thank you, Bob. Uh, up next, item nine would be the consent agenda. Here we are taking action, approving the minutes from March 20th and April 10th, the disbursement and the personnel report. This is a good opportunity to ask, uh, is there any reason to pull anything out and vote on it separately? Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were telling us no. Okay. Um, okay, no reason to pull anything out. We'll entertain a motion to approve. I move that the board approve the consent agenda. agenda. In a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, uh, Eric, if you would, please. Yep. Elizabeth? Aye. Oh, it's a roll call vote. Roll call vote, sorry. So For the consent agenda. Yeah. Got it. Aye. Jolene? Aye. Lori? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I, myself, and I. 5 0 pass. Motion carries. Thank you. Sorry about that, Elizabeth. <laughs> you good job. Go uh, Item uh, 10. Uh, these are things that do require board action. The first is item A, which is the identified official with authority to authorize user access to MDE secure websites. And Mr. Elstad is going to help us by explaining that. Yeah, um, finally referred to as the IOR, individual identified official with authority, um, is something that the Department of Education uses as a secure tool that they have one person in a district that um, is able to secure access to different systems. So um, if we were looking at our service financial system that um, Lori Voles and her staff that are making the reports and the ones that are in identifying uh, financial information for our district have that access. I, I am the only one of, based upon your approval uh, that has access to make sure that the people in our district, the right people have the right access uh, to the different programs. And again, this is something that you have take an action on annually to do so. Any questions? No, got it? Yeah. I move that the board authorize Jeff Elstead to act as the identified official with authority for Owatonna Public School District 761. Second. We have motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor with an aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item B is the existing Owatonna High School Citizens Task Force recommendation. It's part of your board packet. All of you will remember there was a, a presentation that was made at our work session two weeks ago uh, with regard to this. Um, let's do this. Let's uh, entertain a motion to approve and open it up for some discussion. I move that the board approve the task force recommendation to cease negotiations with close and demolish the portions of the current high school building that will not be used by the district and retain the green space. Second. We have a motion and a second, and this is a good opportunity to stop. Elizabeth had um, reached out via email and asked a very good question, and I think that it's a, it's a worthwhile question and it's worth re-asking publicly. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, so my question was around the, the combined nature of the question. Um, I would have preferred it have been more like multiple choice, such as do we cease agreements with Bose do we demolish the existing buildings as previously discussed? A not B, both A and B, that sort of thing. Um, and so yes, I'd pose that question to Mr. Sebring. And it sounds like it is both or none in this vote, correct? Okay. And so, so like, sorry, just to clarify again. So if the vote is affirmative, it's agreeing with the statement as is. Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's in opposition, it's saying, no, I don't agree with Correct. that. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep. Got it. Mm -hmm. And the, not to do a deep dive, um, but the primary reason that the two of them are linked together is simply because um, the school bond issue to build a new school passed several years ago and uh, Bob and the team from the facilities area 
put out a request for proposal a year and a half ago with regard to this existing site. A um, couple of the realities are that there was but one entity that came forward, at least with a viable um, um, opportunity that was worth considering. And in the time since, <clears throat> when the task force, the citizens task force looked at this building, uh, it was a unanimous decision on a cross-section of 25 people from Oatana that came back with this recommendation. And we are very respectful of that. They took the time, and I think that it was probably something on the order of four months that they had spent um, looking at the disposition of this high school. Our other reality that we are confronted with is um, it's not just the cost of keeping this building up. If we were to say, we're gonna wait and we'll continue to entertain different options. It's a twofold financial noose, if you will, for this school district. The first of which is, it's very difficult and it's very expensive to keep up a building, and especially a building that is not occupied. The second, and it's a very, rea very real reality for us, and that is <clears throat> every day, the cost of demolition continues to go up. And from the time that the school bond itself passed to where we find ourselves today, those costs have gone up measurably, um, maybe even 2x from what we had thought back when we passed the school bond. So Elizabeth, to the question that you had posed, and I think it's a very good question, it's worth bringing up and lifting up, um, there are reasons for saying it's, it's time to move forward. I'll open it up for any other comments. Mm -hmm. I think you've very well said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have 25 qualified and you know community members that put their time and energy into it. And I, and I go back to what they all said, first words out of their mouth when they did their presentation was we all wanted this to work. Mm -hmm. We all were hopeful that we could figure something out. We wanted this to work for the neighborhood for the community whatever and it just didn't work and it would be irresponsible as a task force to not end the agreement and there was nobody else that came to the table and they weren't going to push they weren't going to continue to kick the can down the road with the maintenance and well maybe someone's going to come forward etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think they did a really good job there was probably a level of grief that that group went through throughout the process realizing that they couldn't make it work. It wasn't going to work. So what are the next things? And I, I respect the time and I appreciate the dedication they had to this project. And, and I think reality is they made the correct choice. Can I, can I ask another thing? Sure. So I think one of the questions I had, because it made good sense to me when they presented things that it just, the building was not feasible to be used for students or younger children if we were thinking pre-K and that sort of thing. Um, but also just wondering, have people explored the idea of any preservation type groups or historical groups in the county or the state or anybody outside of Oatana that might have been interested in doing some restoration? If I can, Mr. Sebring. Yeah. <clears throat> so the group that came forward, uh, which was FOHSLLC with the initial proposal, um, there were two local people, but one of the other partners, um, Paul Warshower was his name, and uh, he owns a company that does, and he's not from Owatonna, he's from elsewhere in the state, and he has done um, a few projects where he has restored buildings. Part of the funding that was within that proposal was a, their best guess at whether or not uh, historic tax credits could be used for the project. None of that was guaranteed. Uh, because all of it is based upon age, of, there's a number of different factors, but age of building, um, viability of the project, um, what systems need to be repaired, things like that. So there was, so to your question, there was an outside person who's had an expertise in sort of remodeling old buildings, if you will. Some of the projects that he has been involved in have worked out, others have not. Uh, one that's in fairly close proximity was uh, there was an original plan at one point to do something with the old elementary in Kasson, and that just never came to fruition because 
the tax credits weren't available to the point of the things that were needed. So again, he was sort of that outside, I don't want to call it expert, but resource around how to do this and uh, came together with some local folks to try to put together the plan and proposal. And I think it was the sense of the task force uh, that they just didn't have the financing behind them to make sure that it wasn't going to leave the district and or city of Otana uh, in a lurch moving forward uh, should that just fall through. So, yeah. Any other comments, questions? I guess I would just make a couple. Um, you know, I think I'm still grieving, frankly. I mean, I, I'm a lover of old spaces. Um, I value them, and I value the history that they bring. But I also recognize, um, you know, there comes a time when you have to make choices, even though they're not the ones you want to make. Um, the other thing I would just say is, in addition to the task force, which I'm so grateful for their energy and their um, input and obviously all the all the hours over the years that they've spent on this topic. Um, I've also you know, just taken the initiative to speak with other community leaders that I happen to know. Um, picking their brain, getting their sense, and with, without exception, they've, they've all said, you know, it's, it's time to move on. Um, and that green space has a future, um, mm -hmm. assuming we pass this. Um, this is still an amazing piece of land, and I, I'm excited to see what you know, might come of it. It's just not. An old building anymore. Okay. okay. With that, it's a voice vote. So, all in favor with an aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item C tonight would be gifts to the district. Mr. Elstad, if you would, please. Thank you. We have a number of gifts again tonight. I would call out just a couple. Uh, the Mayo Clinic Health System is always very uh, good about helping us and they gave us a gift of $1,500 to help some of our students that are struggling to uh, pay for our OHS activities. And uh, one interesting one was $1,000 from JJT companies to help our Washington Elementary students, uh, the patrol anyway, the safety patrol team, mm -hmm. go to a Twins game. And let's hope that uh, after that, uh, going to the Twins game, that they win a game. <laughs> so anyway, but very philanthropic, just a number of gifts coming into the school district again, and I can't tell you how much those are appreciated, and it doesn't always matter the amount. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that our community cares about our students, and they care about our community, and they care about our schools. Very good. We'll entertain a motion to accept. I move the board approve the resolution for acceptance of gifts as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. So, or a roll call, sorry. Go ahead, Eric. Yep. Aye. Jolene? Aye. Lori? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mm -hmm. I myself is on aye. Five will pass. Motion carries. Thank you. Item nine, or yeah, item 11 rather tonight is to adjourn. I'll <coughs> entertain a motion that we adjourn our meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor with an aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs>